Hello everybody, I'm April May Wilson and today I'm going to share with you a video on how I painted this rock titled Let's Go Fishing. So stay tuned. So this rock took about, let's say about three hours to complete because there's so much detail in the fish. This was a request um, from one of my subscribers to paint this rock and it was a lot of fun, but this is definitely kind of a more advanced rock. The, there's so much detail in there, but sometimes that's a lot of fun to, you know, kind of work on the detail. I do have or I will have the full length version uh, of this video over on my Patreon page. The link is listed below in the description. There will also be a traceable, you see it there, that I will also have linked on my Patreon page, but you don't need to be a subscriber for the traceables. Those are free for everybody. The full length videos, it's $4 a month and you have access to everything I have loaded, um, all the videos that I have loaded on there. And the Patreon page is new, so I'm still adding videos to it. So if you subscribe now, there won't be as many, but I'm, in, I'm currently in the process of, you know, uploading those videos. They just take a little time. It takes a couple of days to get, you know, a one hour video to post <laughs> for my internet connection speed. Uh, out here in the country. So anyway, just bear with me on that. If you are a subscriber, they are coming. So for this rock, I painted the background first, and now I've transferred the image using my traceable onto the background. This just made it a lot easier since the background is detailed. And now I'm just going to, I'm going to take the fish in in pieces in sections and I'm going to paint those sections and then move forward that way you're kind of breaking down the segments of the fish and instead of being intimidated by the whole fish and trying to paint the whole thing at one time like blocking it in and then adding detail I'm just going to take it by by sections and I find sometimes when you're working on something that's got this much much detail breaking it down into little segments you get to focus on just that little part and it's a lot easier so in my full length video on patreon you know i show you exactly how i do that but you can kind of get an idea here that you see i'm all, i'm painting the back and the side and then you're going to see as i progress i'm just taking it in in small increments of the of the whole the whole painting And like I usually am doing, I'm using uh, acrylic paints by Liqu Liquitex Basics. And there are a couple of colors. Let's see, did I use? No, I only used, it looks like I, uh, well, no, I did. I used um, the Master's Touch, the Hobby Lobby brand, I think, for my white. I have orange sitting on my palette, but I actually never use that. And the colors that I used for this are going to be listed below in the description. But you don't have to use those colors. Like I always say, you can use whatever colors you want. Uh, and blend colors to get the colors that, that I'm using. Or just use the colors you're using, that you have available. Don't go out and buy special paints to paint this. You can make this fish whatever color you want. 
So I'm moving up towards the eye and I'm still putting in my base coat, you know, kind of blocking in that section and then going in and adding either glazing or details or whatever is needed in that in that portion of the painting. But I'm I'm using all of the, my same techniques the way I normally paint. If you've watched any of my previous videos, uh, you know I like to use a lot of glazing. So whatever is called for for that section, I'm still using my same techniques. And if you wanted to go in and block out the whole block in the whole fish and then go in and add the detail like I do on some of my rocks, you're certainly you could certainly do it that way. I just find when you have a lot of detail in your subject, you can get lost pretty easy as to where the detail needs to be. Um, so for me, just painting this in sections allowed me to keep track of where I was in the painting. And I have the the uh, photo of the finished rock down here in the right hand corner. That's to let you know kind of where we're going. Um, this one it's uh, it's not as critical. A lot of times when I paint I go through when I block in the whole subject because I paint in layers you'll go through some pretty ugly layers. So I'm going to start including a picture of the rock uh, in its final state so you can kind of see where we're, go where we're going to end up. Because um, I do know that sometimes you'll go through some ugly layers and as you're watching you're like, what is going on? But, you know, we do work it out. <laughs> and that's very normal to go through ugly layers. That's just part of the process. And also when you're painting something like this and you're, you know, this isn't photorealism, but I wanted it to still look like a fish. Um, it might be closer to photorealism. It's certainly not hyperrealism, but you always want to use a really good reference photo. One that you can blow up and kind of see the detail. Um, I always recommend painting with a reference photo, no matter what you're painting. It's so much easier and better to have a reference photo. And if you ever get into doing commissions, don't accept commissions where they do not have a really good detailed reference photo. I've made that mistake over and over and over again, and it is such a nightmare. So always just get good reference photos. And you can find excellent photos on, on places like Pixabay that are free reference photos that you can use and you can paint. You can put them in your videos and or post on your social media and you're not going to have any kind of problems with the creator of that photo. They're, they're completely, the website is free and the photos are completely free to use. There are other websites that do that as well, but Pixabay is just one of my favorites. And then of course there's some that are paid. Um, if you have the, you know, the funds to get to pay for some of the photos, you can certainly go that route as well. Um, you do want to make sure that it is okay to recreate it into artworks because some of them won't allow you to do that. That's not in their user agreement. So, and then, as you know, I get a lot of inspiration off of Pinterest. Um, I know some people get in, uh, inspiration off of Etsy as well. Um, I don't spend, I do have an Etsy web page or shop page or whatever you call it um, but I don't spend a lot of time shopping on Etsy but Pinterest I do I get a lot of inspiration off of Pinterest 
and but you have to be careful because there are copyright laws so if you're going to sell something that you see on pinterest well you shouldn't um because that is a copyright infringement whereas pixabay you don't have that problem So I'm working on the water now. The water, you'll see, it's going to go through some ugly stages like what I talked about earlier. Um, and it took me a little bit to get this all fleshed out to where I liked it. I'm not used to painting water, so it, I, it took me a little bit to get it figured out. To get it where I liked it. But eventually I did. So as this video wraps up, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it was a lot of fun for me to paint. Um, if you have any requests for videos to see in the future, please leave me a comment down or a request down in the comment section. So again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.